right, now how did you get interested in this sort of thing? Uh, well, it sort of found me back in 1996. I just had an experience that took place in my home. Uh, I felt this tangible presence. Uh, it was very loving, very peaceful, joyful, and it just woke me up that there was more beyond what my eyes could, you know, physically see. All right. Okay. Now, um, you do not have psychic abilities, you say. I do not. Um, so you can't see ghosts, but you you say you put a human face on them. Explain well, that. Um, you know, with that awakening that happened in 96, uh, there was something else that happened where I became, you know, aware of a, a voice deep within me. And I had been following that lead and listening to what, you know, I was uh, learning about ghosts and spirits, publishing uh, one of the largest ghost websites on the internet, angelsghost.com, and uh, eventually going out into the field, working on ghost communication and uh, cases of haunting, uh, looking to solve them. And what I found is that ghosts are, are basically people, uh, not something that we should fear, Robin, but, um, it, you know, if you walk out in the street and you see a hundred people, you know, most of them aren't bad eggs. You may have one bad egg out there, mm -hmm. uh, but most people are pretty good and some are very loving. Some are, some ghosts are, you know, here watching over uh, uh, family and friends and yeah. Uh, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Um, now, um, you, you say to, uh, that we can help them by uh, being open to the fact that they exist. Well, yes. Um, I, I don't know if I want to tell that story or not, but I, I have a friend of mine that uh, about a year ago told me, uh, you know, that there was a ghost uh, in her home. And uh, she was actually taking a photograph of herself for Facebook uh, with a cell phone. And when she took the photo, there was a man standing behind her uh, that wasn't there. Um, and so she was telling me this story, and I said, you know, should we try to help him? And, and she was like, oh, no. I want to ignore him, uh, you know, no ghost, uh, he'll go away kind of thing. I, I'm not bothering him, he's not bothering me. And, you know, a year later, that activity's kicked up. So, you know, I try to tell people uh, that the first thing is not to be afraid of ghosts and haunting, uh, if, if they're, you know, that spirits are around us, um, that they're interacting within our lives. And the second thing is, is to acknowledge them, they're people, okay. and that we can approach it from a place of compassion. All right. Now, um in your book, Helping Ghosts, you, you cite um, scripture that y you believe does what? Um, I think that uh, ghosts are, are spirits, and the Bible's full of spirits, and, and I think that sometimes we don't realize, uh, you know, that they're in the Bible. And uh, from the Old Testament in the Hebrew Bible, uh, there's accounts of ghosts. Uh, uh, Saul, for example, uh, had a spirit, uh, a negative spirit that was vexing him mm -hmm. that caused him to throw a spear at David. Uh, mm -hmm. That in the Hebrew is called a dibuk, which is a clinging ghost or a ghost attachment. Uh, when we get to the New Testament, we have scriptures that say, you know, that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Um, I mean, I can even point to the Mount of Transfiguration where uh, Peter, James, and John are allowed to peek in on Jesus and what's going on. And here he's communicating, two-way communication uh, with Moses and Elijah. Okay. <laughs> I had to throw I, that out there. Uh, yeah, just throw it out there. Good. Because, you know, I mean, I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I do believe mm -hmm. that there are, there are spirits, but that, that, that none of them are good that it's only from God's side that it's good. Mm -hmm. So, because, you know, the Bible says that the devil is, you know, and his minions are out prowling about, and they can disguise themselves as, as being good. Well, and, and I formerly, I, I respect your beliefs, and I'd, I'd formerly believe that way, uh, but when I actually got out there in cases of haunting, um, I found that the most nefarious of spirits uh, ended up being human, that we could help them cross to the light and continue the life journey. So uh, it allowed me to view the Bible in more of a metaphorical or allegorical interpretation instead of uh, literal. All right. Are you going to stick around? Because we're going to have a crazy round table. I'm here. And, uh, and, and ask uh, questions and uh, talk to our audience and get uh, questions from our, our viewers. So, uh, Lewis Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Stick around. Author of Helping Ghosts, A Guide to Understanding Lost Spirits. Get him a Garmin. Just kidding. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Get him a Garmin. Good line. My And uh, thanks again to AI Root uh, Candle Company for um, providing us with the candles and uh, candelabras, which I'm hoping to take home. Just kidding. All right. 
We're opening up the floor to you and to our audience here in the studio to ask questions of our paranormal experts. Welcome back, Dave Mackey and Lewis Charles. <laughs> and Betty from Sagamore Hills, come on down and uh, ask that. Notice Betty's the only one in white there, <laughs> uh, uh, glowing like a, a Casper. A, a Casper, yes. What is your question for the fellas? With your investigation of the paranormal and your feeling of a presence, have you ever investigated the closed prisons like Mansfield? Yes, I've been. We've uh, been to. Because the minute yeah. you walk in there, did you feel presence all over the place of it's spirits? In my opinion, the Mansfield prison is full of energy because there was a lot of tragic deaths that occurred there, you know, with the, with the prisoners. And um, yeah, we were just in Mansfield um, not too long ago, an overnight investigation. And we've caught much, oh yeah, a lot of evidence, a lot of EVPs. You uh, did the overnight where they come and they stay there the whole night and you stay there wait the whole for night, correct. and are aware of presence? Pardon me? And that you stay there the whole night and you basically are looking and are aware of any presence or spirits that are in the area? Yeah, correct. I mean, you have your hot spots that are, that are located within the prison. Not the whole, you know, there are certain areas that are just warmer than, than others. Which areas? Uh, there's, a, there's a room called the toilet room, believe it or not. It's where they have all their uh, toilets lined up from the, from the cells and, uh -huh. and there's then legend goes that there's a, a, a shadow man that hangs out in that area and we captured an EVP in that area and he's and the EVP says um, they didn't like me they stomped my head off the what they, they didn't like me they stomped my head off hmm. all right okay. <laughs> all right did you we get captured out of there real it. fast you did yes okay. we did all right <laughs> we <laughs> our friend in the pumpkin hat uh, I like it I like it uh, what is your question for our guests well I'm one of the biggest skeptics ever I don't believe in none of this but I think um I do want to ask about a question about my grandmother. When she passed, well, right before she passed, we got a picture of her when she received, um, she was sitting on a chair and she's got a present in her lap and there's stars all around her. It's really cool. It's like bright, regular white stars like you see in the sky. That weren't actually there when you took the picture, but no, they showed they up on the, on the picture. No, they weren't. It's the only picture that has it. Okay. It's just really, really cool and it's just like all around her lap. All right. It's about two months before she passed. Well, I would I would suggest that uh, you say that was two months before. Mm -hmm. um, it's very typical when when a person is going through it, the death experience that visitors, uh, enlightened spirits, uh, could be family, friends, uh, even strangers. They're very loving. Are there uh, to comfort them to help them uh, ease the transition, uh, you know, uh, through the dying process. So perhaps. Uh, the photograph captured something like that. Mm -hmm. It was just really a neat picture and it's the only one and we're all just looking at it like it's just so cool. Awesome. I Hi. have a lot of pictures of the inside of my mother's purse. <laughs> <laughs> the camera would Thank always you. go up. Uh, Michael, Michael wants to know, this is for both of you, how do you know this isn't all a misinterpretation and that you are really and that you really aren't dealing with something demonic? Good question. It is a good question. Yes. How do you answer uh, that? To, to <coughs> the demonic side, um, I think, in my opinion, the demonic spirit would have a lot, a heck of a lot more energy than a regular earthbound spirit would. And you would know if you came across a demonic spirit. And we actually, we did over at Morley Music Hall. And when we experienced that demonic presence, we, I actually whispered in the Julie's ear, we have to go. Really? Yeah, because safety comes first. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I, I, I value your experience, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh -huh. but I come at it from a little bit different perspective, um, uh, having looked at uh, the origin of demons, et cetera. Um, I'm, uh, m what, my, what my findings were that there are uh, ghosts of ill intent, and uh, uh, I call them type A. They're very controlling. They're not the, the norm, but when you run into them, they're very adept at manipulating uh, the environment and controlling people through fear. But when you get behind the fear, we were always able to help them and get them to move forward. But right. very difficult to deal with, just like Dave's experience. So We will have both of your uh, gentlemen's information on our website, so if people have more questions or want to contact you, Dave Mackey and Louis Charles, thank you very much. And we'll have more in a minute. Yes, we will.